The first time I had the idea for Homegoing was in 2009 on a trip to Ghana to the Cape Coast Castle. Um, the castle is where they kept slaves before sending them through the Middle Passage. And I had never been before that trip, but while there I took a tour and the tour guide talked to us about how the British soldiers who lived and worked in the castle used to marry the local women. And then from there he took us down to see the dungeons. So I knew kind of immediately that I wanted uh, to write something that would juxtapose the lives of two women, one who was living upstairs as the wife of a British soldier and the other who was living down in the dungeons. It was important to me that the novel be about the legacy of slavery, so the idea that slavery was this thing that continued to leave an impact upon generation after generation after generation. Um, so I knew really early on that I wanted the book to end in the present day um, because I wanted readers to be able to kind of see the effect of slavery, the effect that slavery had on a family um, over a very long period of time. I think that, you know, there has always been a tension in America between um, black people and the police, black people and people in positions of authority. Um, this goes back many, many years. There's a scene in No Home where a character is returning to his mother's house in Harlem during the Harlem riots of 1964. And the Harlem riots of 1964 started because a 15-year-old black child was shot by the police. Um, so to have that happen in 1964 and to see that it continues to happen today shows that America hasn't really changed that much in, in kind of significant ways in the ways that we expect it to have changed. Um, so, so much of Homegoing, I think, was about following those patterns and seeing the ways that that these kinds of traumas are cyclical. You know, if you don't deal with something as it happens, it continues to happen. Before writing the novel, I read A um, Hundred Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, um, which is a really wonderful book, um, also a multi-generational family novel. Um, so it helps me, I think, think about how I might write something this ambitious in scope. Um, other novelists who have influenced me include Toni Morrison, whose work I love, um, particularly the novel Song of Solomon and Beloved. Um, and then also there's an American writer named Edward P. Jones who writes these really beautiful long short stories about black people living in DC. Um, and so I think I learned a lot from him as well. I always really loved reading a lot. Um, even from a very young age, I was a very, very big reader. Um, and very quickly for me, I think reading and writing went hand in hand. I wanted to see if I could do the thing that I, that I loved, um, which was to create fiction. Um, and so the first short story that I can remember writing, I was seven years old. Um, so I'd always kind of known that I wanted to be a writer. I did study fiction um, in college and then again in graduate school, um, but I think for me that was more about kind of having the time to devote um, to the work in an institution that kind of allowed me to, um, again, to have the time and the space and the money to do so. Um, but I, I think I would have been a writer regardless. I certainly feel different after the writing and publication of Homegoing. I was very young when I started the book, and so I think in a lot of ways I've grown up with it. And so to be finished writing it and to kind of see it out in the world has felt like a, a chapter has closed on my own life. Um, suddenly I have to kind of figure out what to do next and uh, you know, how to spend my days now that I'm not thinking about these characters anymore. So I, I definitely feel different.